Would you hear us? In the police. Let's pretend to be cops, eh? We can just stand around and look confused. Oh, what a long day. Excuse me, but are you Mr. Capello? My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm hoping you could spare a moment to talk. Manners, what a pleasant surprise. Most of your colleagues have lacked even the simplest of common courtesies. The reason should be apparent, Mr. Capello. I am not a policeman. I have taken an independent interest in your situation. Ah, of course. You're a journalist. Nothing so prosaic. I'm a detective of sorts with an interest in the interesting, such as your case. I'm not after your money nor a scandalous tale for the Gazette, just the truth. Ah, how quaint. Bene. Ask your questions, Mr. Holmes. You are surprisingly composed for a man accused of murder. Not so easily shaken, I take it. Life is full of surprises. You'd be astonished how many deals go sour due to a force majeure. One becomes skilled at adapting. I am confident this will all be set straight. Until then, I will endure. And yet your fist tells a different story. It seems you recently found yourself in a fight. A fight? I'm afraid not, young man. It was a minor mishap, with none such adventure. To succeed in life, you don't need to fight. One must simply be smart and persistent. I am speaking from experience. Please, tell me how you ended up in this situation. Well, this morning some clients arrived to finalize their purchase of a Copello Maggiore safe. But when we opened the door, out tumbled a dead man. And I take it this wasn't normal? No, I normally keep my corpses in the wardrobe. Please, young man, spare me your wit. The rest of the day was a blur. I recognized the victim, and it seems so did the police. That was enough to make me the main suspect. Who sent for the authorities? No one. As it happens, we had a break-in last night. Nothing was stolen, but for insurance purposes, the report had to be made. So... Police officers just happened to be on the premises when we discovered the body in the safe. You say you became the suspect when the police identified the victim. Is there history between you? Surely you jest. That man and I have never met, and never would, unless he became the first detty in history to use our products. Some sort of family feud? I'm afraid I'm not familiar. You must be new to Godona. It's an old tale. Back in Italy, generations ago, the Dettis tried to ruin our family business. They nearly succeeded. The Capellos rightfully struck back, but there has been bad blood ever since. And does that blood flow in you too? I told you, sir, it's an old story. Or it was. I fear this horrible event portends worse to come. My wife may be in danger as we speak. I'd like to inquire about the burglary. I'm not sure I see the connection. But if you wish to know more, talk to Billy Lloyd, the night watchman. He scared off the thief. Was it also Billy that discovered the burglar? No, my wife did. She had stayed late yesterday. Poor Augusta. At least she's safer with the police than at home alone. You mentioned you were showing your wares to some prospective buyers when the safe was opened. Who were they? Clerks from the bank. They inspected the safe from top to bottom yesterday. I assumed the sale was just a formality at that point. And the safe was closed? 
It's usually open, but it locks automatically when the door swings closed. That's another marvellous Copello invention. A coffin that locks itself. Marvellous indeed. Help me grasp your movements yesterday. What time did you meet the customers from the bank, and did you have any other appointments? Yesterday, uh, the bank clerks arrived at 10 a.m. Uh, afterwards, I was alone in the office until my wife Augusta came in at 3 p.m. I left for home at 6.30 p.m. And what about this morning? Our meeting for the demonstration was set for 9 a.m. I arrived about half an hour prior in order to prepare. I have one final inquiry. Do you recall the time at which the safe door was closed? Young man, I may just as well ask you when you closed your cigar case. I have opened our safes a dozen times a day for a dozen years. I do not recall. Well, Mr. Capello, I think that's all I need from you at present. Where can I find your office? Here, take my card. Billy should be on site to assist with the investigation. And please, sir, would you check on my wife before you depart? Thank you. I will endeavor to speak with her before I leave the station. Please, treat her gently. Women lack our resilience when it comes to ordeals like this. I shall eagerly await your return. After all, there's little else I can do. Oh, Sherry, disappointing. We were putting on a show and you call it off halfway through. Have you learned anything? Come on, Sherry. Say, I am the law. It's the perfect time to investigate. You must be the inspector. Would you be Augusta Capello? Must I really repeat myself to every baby-faced man in uniform that strides in? Forgive me, I am not the inspector, but I am working on your husband's case. Then I have nothing to say to you. Come back with the inspector in charge so that we may dispense with the endless repetition. Whilst I prefer German composers, the harp solo from Lucia di Lammermoor stands out as one of Donizetti's finest contributions to the form. I'm sure Basilio thought the same. He... he did. How? Did he tell you how we met? Oh, there was no need. It is trivial to observe how much you value your memories of playing harp in the orchestra, and even an amateur Italian harpist would be familiar with Donizetti's finest work. Yes. Music is a balm in these uncertain times. It is nice to meet another who appreciates it. Much as I appreciate the truth. Please, Mrs. Capello, let me help you and your husband. I am not unappreciative, sir. But I'm afraid I presently lack the strength. Basilio tells me you were present during the burglary yesterday. What can you tell me about it? Oh, it gave me such a fright. I fainted, fell to the floor. I wish I could help you, but, uh, I'm just utterly useless. Please, I want to rest before the inspector arrives. Were you familiar with the deceased man found in the safe? No. I did not know him, nor can I conceive of how the poor soul ended up there. You've had quite the day, Mrs. Capello. I shall leave you be. If I have further questions, I may visit again later. Please let me rest. Hello there. They sell door locks, padlocks. No Sherlock's, though. Probably for the best. Imagine dealing with two of you. Ugh. Uh, excuse me, sir. Can I help you? Ill-fitting pants, wonky nose, and hair that appears to have been cut by your own hand. You must be Billy Lloyd. Oh, it's you! I knew you'd come. You did? You're Mirko Gallia, the best investigative journalist on Cordona. I'm a fan of your work. Alas, you're mistaken. The name is Sherlock Holmes, and your employer 
Oh, of course. Discretion. I'm sorry. I, I doubt the policeman upstairs heard me, though, so your secret is safe with me, Sherlock. Mr. Capello told me you were present during the burglary and scared the criminal off the property? Yeah, you should have seen it. As soon as the burglar saw me, they went white as death, ran out the back door of the office. I heard a thud and cat shrieks, so I think they went over the railing and into the bushes out back. Clearly, my reputation precedes me. Mr. Capello was so proud. Hmm, you regard, but you didn't give chase. Well, by the time I made it outside, they were miles away. So I went back to help Mrs. Capello. That kind of gentlemanly courtesy is why I'm so well regarded round these parts. When did the burglary happen? Oh, uh, after ten in the evening. I was just talking to Mrs. Capello. Does she normally work this late? No, it's the first time it happened. But usually I'm alone at night. I was explaining to Mrs. Capello how drinking water every three hours can help with digestion. When she excused herself and went back upstairs. Then there was a scream and uh, I ran up to the office and... I know what happened next, thank you. What about last evening? Do you have any more details about the break-in? Of course. I write down everything that happens during my watch. Take a look. Fastidious in its mundanity, but I will make of it what I can. What did the thief look like? Shorter than me. Mid-twenties. A huge scar across the right cheek going from the eye. Short hair. She didn't look like a ghost. Too corporeal. Hold on. She? You didn't think to mention the burglar was a woman? Why did you assume it was a man? It's the 19th century, sir. Ambitious young women are out there pursuing a career, and I, for one, encourage it. Yes, yes, spare me the sermon. I must go and inspect the crime scene. If I have further questions, Mr. Lloyd, I will find you. Oh, don't worry. I won't be able to keep away. Right. Um... That's about all of you I can take. Why do I get the worst jobs? The bottle is half empty. Recently used, but why would it be here? A wine, well enjoyed. Wouldn't want to be in his shoes. I'm a bit claustrophobic. Bulging veins, cyanosis, bloodshot eyes. Odd foaming in the mouth. Bruises, torn nails, bleeding was severe and continued at length. Clothes are not fully buttoned. Was the victim dressing or undressing? Blood on the safe door could have been left by the victim. Clear indications of blunt trauma possibly inflicted before the victim was in the safe. What a rotten way to die. Yeah, what a shame. What can you tell me about Mr. Capello? He's a good employer, but very focused on work, and very serious about security, of course, since he employed a night watch of my calibre. Not everyone appreciates his strict business approach, though. Store clerks don't seem to last long in the office. Good to know. No. Have you noticed anything different about Mrs. Capello recently? Mm, not really. She talks to me more when I start my shift. Probably because of the 100 Best Curry Recipes book I'm reading. Oh, and uh, we've been running out of paper a lot lately, so she often sends me out to buy more for her. She's very particular about the paper we use. Not only one store on the island stocks it, and it's on the other side of the town. But I'm really fast. Interesting, thank you. 
Um, I don't know. Do you know anything else about the dead body in the safe? Well, there is the rule of threes. You can survive three weeks without food, three days without water, three hours in harsh weather, and three minutes... Of you talking? ...without air. I'm sorry, did you say something? No, no, very enlightening, Mr. Lloyd. Thank you. Is this code memo still valid? Oh, yes. It's the same combination code everywhere. It corresponds to Mrs. Capello's birthday, actually. In fact, during this year's celebration, I was allowed a sip of champagne. That's when I had to dry my trousers, and then I had to... OK, thank you, Billy. I'm going to catch the criminal myself, but later. Concert program from seven years ago, an Augusta La Ducha is listed as a harpist in the orchestra. Two theatre tickets for Shakespeare's Othello. The performance is tomorrow. <laughs> I have to respect the classics. I swear I just saw a lion out there on the railing. Well-organized workplace. Mr. Capello is the best. Okay, this chap is seriously creepy. Don't forget about the cats in the bushes, Sherry. Do you know whose keys these are? Uh, probably Mr. Capello's. Police took him so suddenly. I have the same set, but it's more efficient has fewer keys. So you don't have access to the entire office? No. Only Mr. and Mrs. Capello have the key to the back door. Do you know anything about these entries? No. But Mr. Capello is so well organised. I use a different method. Very popular among the Buddhist monks. You create an attic in your mind and... I'm familiar. Keep it tidy, put only necessary information in, remove unnecessary information regularly. What? Oh, it's called an attic. You just stuff it with everything. You never know what might prove helpful someday. That is profoundly upsetting. Do you know what this note might be about? I cannot presume to know another's mind, of course, but... I think Mr and Mrs Capello have been having some familial difficulties, probably due to their lack of children. One of my oldest friends helps couples with their relationship troubles, and he always says... You don't have to continue. Oh, well, he says that to me as well, but I'm, I'm perfectly happy to. No, I insist. I'm going to catch the criminal myself, but later. Strength, security, peace of mind. Hmm, tacky. Well, you know, that's your opinion, good sir. The letter F is inscribed within a four-leaf clover pattern. Passe muraille. Walk through walls in French. Our thief seems rather arrogant. A comprehensive set of lockpicks, recently cleaned with no fresh scratches. Uh, maybe. 
maybe it would be wise to take a look around outside before we enter. Just a thought. Other gangs are planning an attack on the backyard, boys. The pipe is looking for information. It's gonna be raining soon. Hello. Hello, Buffy. I'm hungry. These goods are still fu- Hello, mister. I have some information for you. I'm not interested in the advice of a man like you. Move aside. I have places to be. Hello, mister. I've got some information for you. Heard you were asking. Have you now? Well, let's hear it. So the bandits, right? Not coming. Bigger fish to fry, they say. Bigger worries. Interesting. Are you absolutely sure? Heard it with my own ears. Lord is my witness. Ah, oh, good. Here you go. Buy yourself something nice. Might I suggest soap? Ah, oh, thank you, mister. Thank you. What a simpleton. It's supposed to be Philip from London. Good impression. Don't bother moving. Too simple. The snuffs. Time to knock this guy out. I'm coming for you. Get ready for some pain. It won't work this way. I'm coming. Too simple. The snuff's red. Give him the pepper. He's all yours now. Go for it. Don't bother. The snuff's ready. I couldn't miss the party. Take a rest. Give him the pepper snuff. Eat lead. <laughs> no more. The snuff's ready. Overcome the brute now. <laughs> Too simple. Give him the pepper snuff. Okay, okay, I give up, I give up. Miss Sevigny. 
A place where we can talk about all your recent activities. We have a nice profile on you, you know. What are you talking about? I didn't do anything. Is there nothing you didn't do, Miss Sevenia? Thieve for the gang, break into the Armour Capello office, kill Niccolo Detti? I... What? Kill? I didn't kill nobody. No, I... How... So you admit the rest. I suppose you won't mind explaining some things to me then. You were in the Armour Capello office yesterday evening, Miss Sevigny. The same place that Niccolo Detti was found dead today. What happened? How would you know? You can't prove anything? It's written all over you, Miss Sevigny. I presume you did not intend your evening to end with a fall over the railing and a fracas with felines. Need I continue? I... Oh, zut alors. It was just a job, nothing else. I was asked to come. Here, see for yourself. I don't know who hired me, but I think they wanted to pin the crime on me. Poor Niccolo. You knew Mr. Detti, how? Niccolo and I grew up together. I hadn't seen him in years, then ran into him on the street, smiling with some lovely lady on his arm. And that was the last time you saw him alive? Wait, until I found him dead yesterday. That same woman was there, too. It can't be coincidence. You saw a woman in the office? Mm-hmm. She started screaming, so I slammed the safe door and ran when I saw a guard coming. When were you offered this job? Ah, oh, mon dieu. Um, I don't remember precisely. I, I think the letter arrived around 9.30 in the evening. It sounded tricky, but the money was good. And you arrived at the office? Perhaps 45 minutes later. I am very good, sir. I was in and out in five minutes. I don't like lies. No, no, wait. Um, okay. It took 15 minutes. All right? Still impressive, no? Your thieving days may well be over, Miss Sevigny. Until this matter is resolved, you will remain here. Good day. I didn't do a thing. What exactly was your relationship with Niccolo Detti? Uh, who? Uh, what are you talking about? Madam, please, a young woman dedicated her music and an enthusiastic artist, your marriage to Basilio could not have offered all you needed. And then about six months ago, you met Niccolo Detti. There was a spark, you started to see each other. It brought passion back into your life. How c could you? But your tryst didn't go unnoticed. Felicia Sevigny spotted you with Niccolo, but rather than cease your affair, you took care to avoid the public eye. You started working with your husband at the office and met your lover there in the evening after Basilio departed. Billy would not notice, and you hoped neither would your husband. Do I have this right so far? I... Yes. I love Basilio, I truly do. But his first passion is his work. I, I respect that, but it left me... adrift. Niccolo. <laughs> Sweet Niccolo. He was the man I needed. If he had had any other name, I... I would have talked to Basilio. But he was a detti. And your husband suspected something? I... I think he did. He asked questions. Billy's schedule was moved forwards here. Yes. Yes, he suspected. And thus, we arrive at the heart of the matter. How did Mr. Detti end up deceased in the safe? I... I do not know. Madam? I don't know anything about his death. Are you sure this is how you wish to proceed? It is the truth. Please, just leave me be. Were you aware of this, Mr. Capello? of the relationship between your wife and Niccolo Detti? Uh, enough! I will not hear it! 
Augusta is an impressionable woman feeling the stress of this horrible situation. She does not understand what she is saying. I see. So, you think... I think that if you want to help, you should stop bothering my wife and find the criminal responsible. I'm afraid nothing to add to this. Mr. Capello, have you anything to say about the burglar's claims? Not a whit. The woman is a liar and a criminal. I don't give it the slightest credence, and neither should you. Another question? I'm interested in some entries in your diary that may prove important. Could you elaborate on these ones here? Bene. I won't name the detective, but the rest assured that is unrelated to the investigation. It is just one of our clients. And those safe entries are about an interested party who was going to purchase the product. We met yesterday, and today were to finalize the transaction. Alas, that opportunity is no more. You've been a good help. How long have you known your wife, Mr. Capello? How is that relevant, young man? Please, I need a complete picture of all the parties involved. Consider, perhaps, the possibility that the burglar was targeting your wife. It seems unlikely. Though, if a detty was out to threaten my wife... <sighs> we met seven years ago. Augusta was a harpist with an Italian orchestra. The passion in her eyes back then. I am glad she still has some of it now. And you and your wife get along well? I love her most dearly, and I know Augusta loves me. I fear someday she may be bored at work, but I try to give her all she wants. Is this note still valid? Oh, yes. We use this code by default for each safe. Now, sometimes a buyer may ask to see how it can be changed, but I always reset it afterwards. And the safe containing the body used the default code, I presume? As it happens, no. In my demonstration, I wanted to show the bank clerks how easy it was to set a different combination. Interesting. Thank you. What was your intent behind this note? This, this is private, young man, and hardly relevant. Its relevance, as it were, remains to be seen. Uh, my wife Augusta joined me in business half a year ago, but works late hours. I worry because I love her. What else do you need to know? I appreciate your candor. I believe that I have found the truth, Mr. Capello, and that truth does not show you in a good light. And here I thought I had found a bright mind. Why would I need to kill Niccolò Detti? It's simple. This is nonsense. This proves nothing. How do you believe I killed him? Just threw him in the safe? This doesn't even show how I could kill Niccolò. Give it a rest, young man. Uh, how would I even know when to strike? You've lost the plot, young man. It's gibberish. Just admit it. All this time, all this effort, and you get caught up in a fantasy. A shame. Still, a fine way to kill some time until my lawyer arrives from Italy. I trust you will see yourself out. You knew about Niccolo and Augusta. You loved her, and the Detti and Capello conflict is well known. You had to protect your family's reputation. Any simpleton can find reasons for me to dislike a deity, though it takes a special kind to concoct an imaginary dalliance, too. How do you believe I killed him? Just threw him in the safe? That could have sufficed. Niccolo may have been unconscious, and you admitted you had full access to your office for most of the day. Or you could have changed the code during the day, then arrived unannounced in the evening to leave him nowhere better to hide. And why on earth would I do that? To get rid of a detty, to force a confrontation with your wife, either seems entirely plausible. To you, perhaps. But how would I even know when to do the deed, huh? You planned this. Billy's time of work was changed, you met with detectives, you planned when it would happen to the minute. Indeed. How very convenient. Except the detective was my client, and I moved Billy's shift because I was worried about Augusta. I, <laughs> young man, if your mind were applied to something useful, you could truly be something. The game is over, Mr. Capello, and today, you lost. You may think so, but just wait until my lawyer arrives. The police might see things differently. Perhaps, but the truth is the truth. My work here is done. Good day, sir. I don't get your decision. We did all that work, and in the end, nothing about this case changed.
It is a shame it has come to this, but it is patently obvious that you are responsible for Niccolò Detti's death. How... how dare you? I wouldn't want him to... I... I see you need some persuasion. I know that Niccolò Detti went to the office to meet you. This is nonsense. I did not know Mr. Detti was at the office. You knew he was in the safe, but rather than get the combination code from your husband, you sought to free him another way. I... I don't follow you. The fact remains you chose to risk Niccolò's life rather than call for your husband, and I know why. See? You cannot prove anything. Do not presume to tell me my feelings, boy. Leave me be. I don't think Mrs. Capello did this on purpose. I would have let her go. It was a midnight tryst. Niccolò would visit the office once Basilio left, but this time he returned. So you hid Niccolò in the safe. A foolish move. I didn't know the code had changed. It was the only choice. I, c I couldn't let him be found. I loved him. Really? You could have saved his life by simply speaking with your husband, but you sought to free him another way. To free Mr. Detti, you hired Felicia Sevigny, a petty burglar, to crack the safe. And as a result, you killed your lover. No. I... It's because the combination had changed. It is not my fault. You are splitting hairs, Mrs. Capello. The fact remains you chose to risk Niccolo's life rather than call your husband. And I know why. You were afraid how it would affect the reputation of the Capellos. And you feared what your husband would do as a consequence. It's... I... He's a good man, but... He cares about his business. About the family. It would have destroyed him. And now he's accused of murder, Mrs. Capello. How considerate of you. I... Mio Dio, how did this all happen? Despite your best intentions, Mrs. Capello, I believe... You are to blame for this sorry affair, not Basilio. I... I think you're right, sir. Basilio, he... He does not deserve this. None of this. It is not my place to decide what is deserved, but perhaps you now know what to say to the inspector. I do. Good day, madam. I don't think Mrs. Capello did this on purpose. I would have let her go. Mrs. Capello, there is a way out of this mess. When the inspector arrives, tell him very little, insist you are with your husband and that he is innocent. But afterwards, you must tell Basilio about Niccolo. You wronged your husband. He deserves the truth. Perhaps. Yes, I believe you are right. Please give me some time to prepare myself. And thank you. Goodbye, madam. I'm behind you with this one. Some people deserve a second chance. Come on, Sherry.